I want to start by saying I grew up in Flushing, Queens, 1.3 miles from Donald Trump. I grew up with him. I knew he was a malignant narcissist asshole my whole life. <laughs> Yet, um, as an extra honors student at Queens College, I got deceptively recruited into a front group of the Moonies and experienced firsthand brainwashing and mind control and went into a rabbit hole for two and a half years that ended with a deprogramming after a near-fatal van crash. But it was our first speaker on this panel, Robert J. Lifton, who changed my life. I'm going to get, get emotional. But it was his book, Thought Reform and the Psychology of Totalism, 1961, a study of brainwashing in China that was used to help me understand how I had been brainwashed. And it was in 1976, I called him up. I said, I want to talk to you about your book. It saved my life. He said, which book? And I said, <laughs> Thought Reform. And he said, that old book? Why? And I proceeded to mention, he said, come and talk to me. So very briefly, I'm just going to say that after sharing how I got recruited and how I recruited and indoctrinated other people, he said, you need to study psychology and explain it to people like me. So you're meeting me 48 years later. I've written four books, and I wrote this one five years ago the cult of Trump, and people were not ready to understand that brainwashing and mind control is real. And members of the panel said, how is this possible? My, my subjective experience, plus 48 years of helping people get out of cults, says this is a dissociative disorder. This is 300.15 in the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of the American Psychiatric Association that names cults and brainwashing. And there's mental health professionals are not taught about this disorder or how, what can be done to help people recover. So my life work has been how to share my firsthand experience to Preventively educate, this is a public health emergency. We need to preventively educate everyone about what, how to tell the difference between ethical influence and unethical influence. This is called the influence continuum. It's part of my doctoral dissertation. It's on my website, freedomofmind.com. And people need to have psychoeducation. We need preventive education. We need to train people how to do interventions with people who have been brainwashed. People are asking, what do we do after? No matter what happens, whether Trump gets elected, we need a massive psychoeducational effort. And we need recovery. We need to make it OK to say, I was in that cult. And I've been trying to model that. I was in the Moonies. I thought this fat Korean billionaire was the Messiah. I turned my back on my religion, which is Judaism. I turned my back on my country. Because Moon said to me in 1974, democracy was satanic. And we need a theocracy to take over the world. And I was a leader. I was in the room. And he said, we're going to take over and, and amend the Constitution and make it a capital offense for people who violate our rules. And I was like, yes, Father. Educated about the Holocaust, I was like a Nazi. So very briefly, I know I don't have a lot of time. What I want to say is that when I accepted the, 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 the job to do this book, all I knew was he was a malignant narcissist, which is the stereotypical profile of cult leaders, all of them. But what I learned is that there are actual cults controlling him and who have their followers who are brainwashed to follow the cults. And explicitly, I want to call your attention to Opus Dei, there's a very important book that's coming out Tuesday called Opus by Gareth Gore. I interviewed him. It's coming out on Monday, my blog, etc. You need to read this book. William Barr, um, the head of Heritage Foundation who did Project 2025, is Opus Dei. 
Pat Cipollone, it, it outlines the whole thing about Opus Dei. This is a very dangerous authoritarian Catholic cult. By the way, they think the Pope is satanic because he wants justice and human rights, or at least trying to. Another big cult that everyone needs to know about is NAR, New Apostolic Reformation. It's a network of 30 to 40 million Americans. And what makes them, and the media, someone said earlier about information in the media is a critical thing. That's part of my bite model of authoritarian control is information control. And if you can control information, you can control minds. Anyway, I lost my train of thought. So I was talking about <sighs> New Apostolic Reformation. Thank you. The media has been calling them Christian evangelicals. My Christian evangelical friends, who I've interviewed, say this is not Jesus. This is not the Bible. These are mind control cults where someone says, I'm a prophet. I'm an apostle. I speak directly to God. And God told me that Trump won the election. And these people are programmed, behavior information, thought, and emotional control to be new identities dependent and obedient on their cult leader. And they will do whatever he, sa they, he or she says. So if they say we're following Vance, they're going to follow Vance because they are so programmed to fear Satan. Phobia indoctrination is real. It's one of the universal mind control techniques. So I know I, I don't have a lot of time, but I want to say we do need to think about what happens after the election because we have to depolarize our country. And the only way to do it is for people who have loved ones who've been radicalized into MAGA to understand these folks have been brainwashed, but there's a way out and people are waking up and leaving and talking out. There's a group called um, Leaving MAGA. I interviewed Rich Logis who founded that. We need to create an off-ramp to destigmatize. We need to stop calling people morons and idiots who are in a cult and speak to them, build common ground, and ask them good questions that make them think. And lastly, before I can go on for hours, as you know, but the critical thing is that if you attack the leader, the doctrine, or the policy head on and try to argue facts, it activates the cult identity to get defensive. They feel persecuted. It's an, it's an ill-advised strategy. What works, and what worked in my deprogramming, was being told about Chinese communist brainwashing. That I was willing to listen to. And Lifton's eight criteria in chapter 22 resonated with me, and it led to my development of the bite model. T talking to MAGA people about Chinese communist brainwashing and pimps and traffickers is the way to have a dialogue to educate people how to reality test. And lastly, I did a TEDx talk with a four-step process that anyone can do for themselves. How can I know if I've been brainwashed? And step one is disconnect from all of your sources of influence. Take a time out. Go in the woods. Don't be on your frickin' phone eight hours a day, constantly getting digital indoctrination with AI and social media. Take a time out. Learn about Chinese communist brainwashing, my bite model, and then seek out critics and former members. Because if, you're not, if, you're, you know, if you really believe, as I did as a Mooney, I wasn't brainwashed, what are you afraid to talk to someone who's left or someone who's studied this stuff? You can decide for yourself. And then there's an exit ramp. So I wanted to just add a little bit extra to give hope, because there is hope. The human spirit does not like to be controlled, exploited, lied to. We respond to love, kindness, compassion. We need, we need to reach out to people we know. That's the first step. It can't be done on, on, on public media. It's a one-on-one -on -one thing. And believe me, people are having doubts. They may not tell you, but they're having doubts, and there is hope. So thank you for inviting me.